Well, welcome in everybody to another Granberry interview here on Granberry TV. Today, April the 13th, Friday, April the 13th, and I am sitting down with a visit with the Fire Marshal, Brian Fine. Uh, Brian, how are you doing? Good. It's uh, Friday the 13th. Well, I'll tell you what. Yeah. Stay away from the black cats today yeah. and any ladders. Just try to kind of hard in the fire business. Stay away from ladders, though. Yeah. yeah. Just don't walk under them. <laughs> Just don't walk under them. Uh, I know that uh, this time of the year, you know, we're getting into that. You know, spring is officially in full force, right. and we're getting into the where the school kids are fixing to let out, but the temperatures are beginning to creep up there, and I know a lot of people are concerned because there's been some talk about a burn ban. And uh, you've explained it to me, and I thought we'd let uh, the viewers hear a little yeah. bit about it. Yeah, um, the, the burn ban that was on the agenda for this last court, uh, it was actually tabled for now uh, because of some further discussion needs to go into it. What it is, it, it really has nothing to do with the conditions out there right now. Um, yeah, everything's green. It's actually a good time to burn. The winds are down. Uh, we're getting enough rain to keep things green. So it really has nothing to do with... Uh, those dangerous conditions that we experience every summer and all that. What this comes back to is that wonderful thing that's been going on with the EPA and the non-attainment. And what we're trying to do is, uh, Commissioner's Court and myself have been kind of looking at some different plans with it. And one of the things some other states have done and other counties have done is implement, and we're gonna change it to where it's not gonna be a burn ban, it's gonna be burning restrictions. And what it is is a kind of taking some of the things that people are able to do during the winter months and restricting it down during the summer because that's when uh, the you know there's more impact on the ozone layer and that's what the EPA and all that's monitoring and as an example uh, one of the restrictions is is if somebody's got a large area that they're clearing a brush and they've got 20 big brush piles out right under the way that things are written out they light all 20 off well, you're putting a lot of smoke and a lot of you know a lot of carbon, a lot of stuff up in the air, and so what this one would propose is uh, one pile, 60 by 60 for every nine acres. So you can't light off all, and it has to be on a nine-acre lot type thing. So you can't light off all 20 of those at one time. Um, so some stuff like that that we're just looking at doing. Other than that, really the uh, the way it's written is hand in hand with the way the laws are now. You can't. You cannot burn anything other than brush. That is the only thing legal to burn in the state of Texas. No household trash, uh, none of that stuff. And, uh, you know, we get people burning furniture and, and all these other things. And uh, the way the laws are now is if you're burning something other than brush, it's a minimum of a Class C misdemeanor, depending on what it is. If it's anything with rubbers, uh, asphalt, uh, wires tires stuff like that it's actually a class a misdemeanor mm -hmm. so i mean it's a serious offense the state's serious about trying to control the air quality in the state of texas and with hood county getting hit with this whole thing with the epa uh, we're doing a major crackdown on it and where we've the law has changed on some of it and we've been given some warnings we're now at the point where we've got enough media out there put enough out there with the epa side of it uh, that okay we're we're done writing the, the warnings it's you're gonna have to go explain to the judge why you did what you did exactly you, know, so. you have to be responsible and you know I've even seen people you know uh, take out uh, like paint cans and stuff right. they had in the shed and put that in there and when you get into burning of the chemicals and stuff exactly. you could really be facing a serious charge if you got caught doing that yeah and uh, ignorance of the law is no excuse and like you right. say there's been enough information out there where and Hood County and Granbury in and of itself has been uh, at the forefront of making resources available to people, bulk days, exactly. uh, certain exactly. days that you can take and uh, get right. rid of the, this, these uh, items without having to burn them. Right, and you know, the Citizen Collection Station, a great, a great project. Uh, you know, for people that are burning some of these things, I tell them, you realize that this ticket is yeah, two hundred fifty dollars, five hundred dollars depends on you know what what the offense actually is. To where for twenty five dollars you can take a tandem axle trailer fully loaded down to Citizen Collection Station. We've got the free brush collection on Wednesdays, so we've got these different avenues out there for these people. To where you know we've got normal trash collection, so you know pay the 
thirty dollars, whatever it is, to have a trash service, it's a lot cheaper than the ticket. You know, one ticket's gonna is a year's worth of trash service, so to speak. And uh, yeah, use these avenues. Don't be burning the stuff. Uh, you know, burn and brush. That's fine. You got some trees down. You need to clear. You know, clear some uh, some leaves and stuff. You know, all that. That's fine. Do what you got to do. You know, providing there's not a burn ban and do. You know, use common sense. Obviously, when you're doing the burning. But uh, yeah, the state of Texas says you can burn brush, and you can only burn brush generated on your property. And that's one of the other issues we've had. There's been some tree services that will go clean up your property, then they bring it back to their location and burn it. Well, no, that's not happening. It's uh, and like I said, we're really because of this EPA stuff, we're really trying to show that uh, we're trying to do everything we can to make the situation better environmental wise. And bottom line is, is if we can't achieve the goals we want to achieve, all of our vehicles, we're going to pay the price on it. You know, instead of paying fourteen dollars, whatever it is for an inspection sticker, we're going to have to go get them smog now. Yeah. So now you're bumping up to sixty mm. bucks, sixty, seventy bucks. Um, not to mention the cost on the different businesses in the area that do inspections that are going to have to retool or go out of business because they can't afford the equipment. Yeah. So it's a lot easier just on the enforcement side and on uh, on the uh, county commissioner's court side to put some restrictions in there to increase the enforcement on it and see if we can bring this back under uh, under the uh, uh, levels that the EPA wants and maybe keep us out for a little while longer on it. And so we're trying to, I mean, ultimately we're trying to, trying to do what's right uh, by state law and we're also trying to do what's right by the citizens of the county. Absolutely. So. You know, do y'all still have that uh, program on Highway 51? I know that uh, last year I took it big advantage of it took some brush down there right. and then they actually gave me a bag of mulch right yeah that's every wednesday isn't that, that great it's open and yeah and it doesn't cost anything go up there and then chip it and, and it's better than so. better to chip it than it is to burn it exactly absolutely and then uh, you get to recycle and that's yeah. always good exactly you know it's better and then you know the worst thing is you burn it up and then you realize you need a bag of mulch now you gotta go buy mulch at the local absolutely. store you know so. absolutely right well, uh, moving on, I'll tell you, uh, one of the big, big things about your department is the amount of training that you have to go through just to get to be uh, a professional that you are. But you always have to have continuing training and education and stuff like that. And I know that y'all are still doing that. And uh, yes. you want to touch on some of the certifications and some of the stuff that y'all been uh, going through? Sure. Um, yeah, the uh, There's been a big change on the fire investigator side nationwide over the last 10, 15 years. And where it went from initially, uh, it was kind of, uh, you were taught and it was handed down from generation to generation as you got trained on different things. And that's how you knew, recognized different signs of different things in the fire, what pinpointed the origin and all that stuff. And like I said, about 15, 20 years ago, really started doing the push towards the scientific side. and. Now that is everything we do with the investigation is based off the scientific method, and you know we have to have our hypothesis and develop our theories on it, and go out there and prove and disprove our theories. And it's really changed uh, one our reporting structure, where if we can't absolutely certain say this caused the fire, then we have to leave it as an undetermined fire. Now we can put probable causes in there, but we if we can't 100% say that's uh, what caused it. Now, in order to say that's 100% what caused it, we have to have the education and training to do it. Absolutely. Uh, we go through uh, uh, classes on explosives, classes on uh, fire behavior, fire dynamics. Uh, we go through classes on the motivation for the fires, uh, as far as arsonists and stuff like that. Um, ethics, uh, the scientific method itself on how that works with proven or disproven theories and how to develop it and, and all that. Uh, one of the things that uh, I actually weren't sure from it today is I went last year, went up to the National Fire Academy in Emmitsburg, Maryland, and which is uh, it's an honor to get accepted to go there and did a two week course on uh, fire and arson investigation. And it was really neat because one, we had our classes made up of students from all over the United States. Two is our instructors are all ATF instructors. Oh, wow. So ATF is the premier authority when it comes to fire investigation. And we spent two weeks up there and we went through everything from courtroom testimony to uh, uh, electronics and electricity and, and uh, residential le uh, electricity and all that stuff. And they showed us some of the old myths that are out there. Uh, one of the things that the, uh, as an example, and don't do this at home, but 
the instructor threw a uh, light that was plugged into a bucket of water and then had one of us put our hand in there. Well, I can tell you it wasn't me that was the first one to do it, but to prove that, you know, with the ground fault uh, interrupts, how they work and how they don't work and how you can get, you're okay with uh, the way the electricity behaves and all stuff. So there's a lot of stuff like that. And then it culminated the two weeks with, um, we did, a, they've got these cells up there. They're basically one room buildings. And they went in to six of them and we broke up into teams. They set different types of fires in all six of them. And there were some pretty elaborate ones. There were some pretty basic ones that were squirting lighter fluid on the floor and lighting it off. But there was others, uh, like ours was a rag shoved inside of a heat lamp, put on a timer and all these different things. And this thing is completely consumed in the fire. Well, then we come in as a team and we have to do the investigation. Neat thing about it is, is uh, they have everything that was used in that room. We can actually go and get the duplicate out of the supply room so we can prove and disprove theories and all that stuff. Um, which is what sometimes on the county side we don't have the option of going to spend money and buying a light to see if right. see if it do, will do what we think it'll do. Uh, and if it's uh, a lot of the times if it's not something that we believe is criminal related, then we'll leave that up to the insurance company to complete. And you know, if they think Mr. Coffee caught a fire on the counter, then they can go and prove that through their labs. But so yeah, we do a lot of training on that. Um, Jessica Sanchez, one of my deputies, actually just went through the same class, just got back a couple weeks ago from being up there. And uh, other than that, we're always going to local training. Uh, we do part of the Tarrant County Arson Task Force, which uh, the name kind of is wrong now because it's not just Tarrant County, it's Wise County, Parker County, Hood, Johnson County are all part of it. And uh, we have a monthly meeting, and that's the first two hours of our meeting is actual training on different things. And, we do uh, anything from training on uh, rights warning waivers and search warrants to actual fire investigation itself and all so, Yeah, we, we keep busy. And the thing is, is uh, we have to abide by NFPA code 1033, which tells us what our educational requirements are. And it goes through, and that's one of the things it says, you have to have continuing education beyond your basic level. Man. Yeah, so we're, yeah. See, We're averaging probably about 80 hours a year at least in education. See, I, I might have gotten into this field, but I'm just not good on the education part of it. It's, you know, I love it. It's, it's really fascinating. Uh, I got a chance to go to New Mexico about three years ago. Uh, and the nice thing is, is like New Mexico and this one up at the National Fire Academy, we have to pay the money up front as a county, but then we get reimbursed from uh, the federal government for going to these classes. Oh, wow. So it doesn't. It ultimately doesn't cost the county anything for us to go. See there. Other than our paycheck while we're there, which is great. Uh, I got a chance to go to New Mexico and spend a week there, and it was the entire week was an explosion investigation. The cool part is, you know, for me was we got to learn about all those things, and then we got to go blow stuff up. You get to blow stuff up. Yeah, we got. I mean, we built a room, and or they built a room. We'd go out there and see what the room looked like beforehand set different levels of explosives off in there and then come out and see what the effects of different types of explosives are on the wow. building and yes yeah, so, i mean that's and that's stuff that we need to know and it's uh it's fascinating and you know, it's fun too so absolutely anytime you get to blow something up it's fun you know, you know legally blow something up yeah <laughs> no kidding i mean what a cool job you have and, and you know in your job you get to meet a lot of people and you get to you get to uh, uh make good relationships i want to know how in the world Y'all got so good in with the Easter Bunny because I was at the <laughs> celebration that we had this past weekend and I saw him arriving on one of y'all's fire trucks. Yeah, that was, uh, yeah, Cranberry Fire Department. I don't know what strings they pulled, but, you know. What is up with you that? Know, Easter Bunny, Santa Claus, you know, every Christmas, Santa's on a fire truck. So, you know, all across Always the, on a fire truck. Yeah, all across the country. So, yeah, it's. So y'all are in with the big guys. Yeah, we got, we got connections. the connections. That's right. Most definitely. <laughs> Most definitely. I tell you what, and speaking of connections, uh, something I touched on with uh, uh, Sheriff Deeds, and I, I wanted to give you, uh, you know, a platform to talk about it a little bit because uh, it's at the forefront of everybody's minds. You know, we had some devastation that hit the Metroplex uh, recently with the tornadoes, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we are in tornado season. Right. It also, you know, the wildfires that we had over in um, Possum Kingdom last year and up in that area, and then of course with the plant here locally. Let's talk a little bit about emergency response. And, uh, you know, we have the fine facility over there at the uh, Sheriff's Department. And uh, let's talk about your role because you're kind of like the, the big dog. Uh, yeah, that's, I, uh, my 
dual role uh, fire marshal and then emergency management coordinator. The judge is the emergency management director for the county and uh, my my office, uh, the emergency management office, portion of my office, is all about developing the emergency plan for the county. And we pretty much try to predict any type of situation we can have, all hazards is what we call it, all hazards plan, where we go through and, believe it or not, I mean, even up to tsunamis, what if that were to happen? You know, likelihood is down at a, a, you know, a, a one, because it's almost impossible to have happen, but it's still put in there and part of the plan. But, and then we pay more focus on tornadoes and wildfires and issues with the plants and the hazardous materials and stuff and develop the plans for the county. And in doing that, we have to coordinate with all the different county departments. The sheriff, not, and actually not just the county, but the cities. Um, each one of the cities and the unincorporated areas of the county are part of this plan. And we coordinate with, you know, Granbury PD, the Hood County Sheriff, DPS, I mean, any resources in the county, we've uh, identified and worked with them and develop different areas of this plan. And if something were to happen, we can go to it. It's a playbook for us. And we can go to it and say, okay, um, we've got a disease outbreak in animals. What do we need to do? Who's responsible for it? Okay, well, animal control is, uh, Texas Animal Health is, and start going there. Then we get the state health services involved and it outlines step by step what we need to do with it. Uh, all of it is done with, uh, the emergency operations center is our focal point and like i said the sheriff touched on that that's over at the uh, law enforcement center and that is where the meeting of the minds is is uh we've got representatives from all the agencies there we got judge commissioners uh, mayors all that stuff can come in there school districts and come in there and we can d discuss what's in our plan what needs to be done start tasking whoever with whatever they need to do and just kind of push forward to handle handle the emergencies and, and you know, it's really kind of a neat situation because uh, we've been fortunate to we haven't had anything huge happen in several years now and we've been able to offer our services up to Possum Kingdom we've been able to offer our services to uh, Somerville County when they had some big fires and so the nice part is is we work with everybody uh, we work real close to Texas Forestry with DPS and all that so we've built up those relationships to where when something happens it's it's reassuring knowing that we're going to have those people coming to our assistance and working with us uh, one of the other things that we put together is uh you know we we go to north central texas council of governments all the time and work as emergency managers for the region but we put together you know that stuff sometimes gets bogged down by politics up there and we put together a uh, working group that is pretty much all the rural counties in that cog and we've been meeting every month and sit down and taking action plans uh, we had our first meeting two months ago it was discussed that uh, as an example during the possum kingdom the bosque county or uh, bastrop fires that we were told by the state if you need resources you're gonna have to get them from each other the state's out the state cannot provide help right now so this meeting kind of came stem from that for we've developed a resource list what each other has in each other's county. So if I need 10 bulldozers, I can go to that list and say, okay, 10 bulldozers, uh, Johnson County's got them. I can make a quick phone call and get those deployed over here and all that stuff. Okay. Uh, it's, yeah, it's the way we look at it, and this goes from one of our fire departments up to the, to the cities, to the counties and all that. And none of us are big enough to handle everything that could possibly be thrown at us. We're all gonna ask, have to ask for help at some point. And it's just a matter of knowing who to call and get that help rolling as fast as you can. And, and being a coordinator, that's a big, exp let me ask you a question real quick. <laughs> Were you a Boy Scout? Uh, yes, I was. See, I tried to be a yes, Boy Scout. I, I, I never tried for Boy Scouts because I knew that there was too many rules. <laughs> and I, so what I tried was the Girl Scouts and they wouldn't let me in that either. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah. I just can't win. Probably because probably you're eating all the cookies, right? Well, yeah. Instead of selling them? That, yeah. that would have been my problem. I love those cookies. <laughs> I love those cookies. But a coordinator job, a very, very expanse job there. And, you know, having to work with the other counties and, and coordinate all that on top of your your duties, boy, that, that can get daunting at times. Oh, yeah. It, it never, 
you know, that's kind of the neat thing right now with the weather cooperating the way it is on the fire side. Right. It gives us a chance to go back and review and update some of the emergency management stuff. Um, we're working on some programs with, uh, as an example, the county buildings do not have a identified, and I don't want to say tornado shelter, but an identified safe area in them. And we've been able to go through and do that. We're going to get start getting signs made up and put in those county buildings, not only for the county employees, but for the public. Let them know that, okay, you know, if something happens and we say it's time to take shelter, here's where you go in that mm -hmm. building. So, so you, you heard it right here. Uh, Fire Marshal Brian Fine, always prepared. That's right. Always prepared. That's right. Got on it. all levels. Hey, I'll tell you, you know, what. I, I always say I can't know everything. I just try to know who to call. There you go. So and that's you, why you I've got, got like 2,800 contacts on my phone. So There you go. <laughs> big roll of days. Hey, listen, there's a big event coming up. Mm -hmm. And I know that you're chomping at the bit to tell everybody oh, about it. Can't uh, wait. It is Ride the Hood. And this is going to be April the 28th. Tell us all about the details. I know that the veterans are getting involved in this. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's going to be a good time. It, this is, yeah, it's something I'm really excited about. I've uh, had the fortunate pleasure of being both on the fire department side, and then uh, I'm also a member of Blue Knights, which is a law enforcement motorcycle club, and they're helping out on this. Uh, the uh, Robin Greer, who was a veteran coordinator, uh, really works at the American Legion and the VFW, came to us and said, hey, how did you guys do through the PK fires? I said, well, what do you mean? She said, yeah. How much money did you get from Boston Kingdom? How much did, you know, they collected a lot of money up there. How much got sent down to Hood County? And I said, zero. You know, we're still filing paperwork with the federal government to try to get reimbursed for the operations we did up there. Red tape. Uh, yeah, exactly. Red tape paperwork shuffle. Yeah, yeah. The name's not right on here, so the whole packet's bad. It's just like the military. Hurry up and wait. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Yeah, the last time we did this, we filed an 05. I think we got payment in 09. Anyway. Oh. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, she came to us and said, hey, the American Legion and the VFW would love to put on a fundraiser for the fire departments to help them offset the cost that they spent last year. I um, mean, you know, we did some other fundraisers last year, plus just to help them out, show appreciation, and uh, maybe buy some equipment for the future. And great, what do you want to do? Well, they want to do motorcycle rally type thing. I said, okay. Well, that evolved into... Motorcycles, antique cars, Corvette clubs. Oh, wow. Heck, if you just want to drive in, you know, in, in your own personal car, come on by. And it's going to start at the, uh, be on April 28th. It's going to start at, reg registration opens up at, I believe, 8 a.m. to 11. And it'll be at the VFW out on West 377. And it's uh, $25 a vehicle. And I think it's $5 for each additional person in the vehicle. And what we'll do is we've got the route already laid out. I rode it out two weeks ago, and it's beautiful. And we'll start there, and we'll kind of go to Toller Fire Department, and then up through Lipan, back out, and eventually out through Crescent, and uh, through Pecan. Uh, we actually got permission to go through Pecan on the route, which uh, oh, that's a great, that's a great route. Oh yeah, especially on a bike. Oh yeah, and come all the way back in, and then end up at the American Legion over off of Davis Road, and uh, it's about 110 miles for the whole route itself. Oh, yeah. And what it is is we'll go by each one of the fire stations. And each one of the stations will um, have water, you know, have the stations open up so you can go see their equipment and all that stuff. But they'll be doing some little special things there. They'll have, uh, I know one's got a, you know, some leather jackets and stuff. One's got a set of leather. Some are going to do 50-50 raffles and do all these different things in the stations. And just kind of, you know, have fun, get out, see parts of Hood County you haven't seen before. Um, get to see all the stations. I mean, we've got a lot of people that uh, really don't realize they're as close to the station as they are or where their station's even located at. So do that whole route, and then when they end up at the American Legion, um, we'll start gathering up the information on the raffle winners from the various departments. We'll announce that. But there's going to be food. There's going to be a live band. Uh, and that's all included in the money that you paid up front. And uh, the neat thing about it is is the... Uh, the money goes is going to get divided evenly between the fire departments. So whatever they make, it'll get cut right down, you know, in equal portions, and each department will get something. Um, the uh, Texas EMS is getting involved, helping us out. My office is doing some stuff. Uh, you know, we kind of planned the route and all that to make sure we got by everybody, and and uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I'm really looking forward to it, and it's going to be, um, like I said, April 28th. And, April 28th, Ride the Hood, and let's give them a number that they can contact. Do you have a number they can contact? Yeah, actually, they can, uh, yeah, they can uh, call my office, and it's 
3335. And if you need more information, we can get it to you there. Uh, I know I've got flyers and stuff at the office to where, if some matter of fact, I'll send you guys over one so you've got right. the information. Maybe well, you slide shot up on the screen or well, something. Well, you won me over because you said <laughs> you said a good cause to help the firefighters, right. and then you said food. I heard the food part in there. Yep, Just good cause, food. live music, and food. Food. And food. Love foods. And it's and like I said, it, you know, it's a beautiful ride. Uh, we did it a couple weeks ago, and like I said, there was. Uh, I get a chance to see a lot of the county. Uh, most of the time I'm going somewhere, you know, when I, especially out in the remote sections, but I don't get a chance to really look around. And uh, we did the ride, I was on my motorcycle, and we had a group of about six of us were kind of pre-running it, making sure that we had all the route uh, the way we wanted it. And it was a lot of beautiful country. Oh, I'm telling especially you. Especially this time of year with the green and all that. Oh, yeah. It's gorgeous. And, and, and you know, April 28th, that's going to be a great day. Your weather-wise, you could if you're on a bike. This is one of the best times oh, to be out on a bike. It's excellent. And then on top of that, you're going to be riding with a lot, a group of a lot of people supporting a, a great institution and exactly. the, some great people. So, yeah, this and is going if, to be and great. If you can't make it at eight o'clock, and like I said, registration is open eight to eleven. And what the plans are is, you know, as a group of, group comes in and they register, they can take off and go on the ride then. Yeah, they'll so have a copy you don't have to wait to everybody, you know. We're not going to send 500 people out at once. It's you know, if you get a group of 10, come in. You get a group of two. You have, you're by yourself. Whatever, come in, register. You can take off. We'll give you maps of the route. We're giving uh, uh, window stickers out. So like when you go to get in Pecan or Indian Harbor or some of the gated areas, they'll know what to be looking for for the stickers, and we'll allow you in. And, and cool. So it's going to be. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, and we do have a, we do have a rain out date just in case. Uh, we'll push it back one week where it'll be uh, May 5th, I think, is the date. Okay. So. But right now, yeah, I know me, and unless we get one of these severe rainstorms, you know, if it just sprinkle a little bit, we'll all ride. Oh, it'll be good. We'll, it'll be good. We'll April the 28th. Keeps the bugs down. And that's riding the hood, and yep. it is for uh, our great staff that we have. Anything else you have? No, that's it. That's um, it? Yeah. Now, it's, it is Friday the 13th. Again, I'll have to reiterate this to you. Stay away from the black cats. Yep, yep. And if you got to get on that ladder, just stay on the ladder. Don't go underneath it. Don't go. Yeah, but that's where you got to hold on to it. And don't break it. Well, hold you guys on. are out of luck then. Yeah, I just, uh, I'll be praying for you. I'll just make sure I'm going to climb and let somebody else hold on to it. There you go. There you go. <laughs> well, this has been great. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you, sir. It's been another great interview on great.